Hello everyone, welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. In the last video we completed Wicked Eyes and Wicked Hearts, the second of two main quests that needed to be completed to move the story along. Completing this quest opened the last branch of companion dialogue and Inner Circle related quests, and opened the final segment of the Divine Election process, all of which we're going to cover in this video. My plan for this run through, as I've mentioned before, was to romance Cassandra and help her become the Divine, so we'll start there. If no one steps forward, they will debate until... And you think I could make them agree? I've heard enough for one day, Mother Giselle. Talk to her, your worship. Your dialogue here will impact whoever you're backing for the next divine and will open the war table option to support whoever that is. Once complete, that candidate will gain another 10 points towards the election total. As a reminder, whoever has the highest total will be the new divine, um, but there is a hierarchy in case of a tie. Vivian is the default to win if she ties with anybody else, then Liliana, and then Cassandra is actually at the bottom of that. But that shouldn't be an issue given how many different decisions we've padded towards making Cassandra the Divine. Are all dwarves such comedians? Or just you and Varric? I assume you've heard that Leliana and I are both candidates to be the next Divine. Because of what happened at Halam Shiral, of course, the Empire favors you. Thus, everyone close to you. So now the Chantry bandies our names about without even asking us first. I think you'd make an excellent divine. Truly? I never look good in hats. Surely it was never meant to be like this. The Chantry, the Circle of Magi, the Templars, this cannot be what they intended when it all began. The Chantry should provide faith, hope, Instead, it cannot veer from its course, even in the face of certain death. If you're concerned, then make it better. Did you know Varric is Andrastian? Oh, he blasphemes with every second breath, but deep down he believes. His heart is virtuous. But he would never step foot in a Chantry. It should be the first place to which the virtuous turn. It needs to change. Perhaps I must be the one to change it. Your determination is admirable. Some men would call it an unattractive trait. I'm not those men. Truer words have not been spoken. Who's using flattery now? <laughs> I have influence, and I can use it to help the Chantry make up its mind. I cannot ask you to do that. You don't have to. If you think that is the right thing to do, then thank you. I suppose I should not be so concerned. The clerics speak my name for now, nothing more. For now, restoring order and stopping Corypheus remain our priority. Because of where I am in the story, before I can do the support Cassandra operation, I have to go through a cutscene and take a quick exploration trip with Morrigan. For the present, they'll send aid on request. And your actions at Adamant denied Corypheus his army of pet demons. With Orle's support, our numbers match his. Corypheus's followers must be panicking. My agents agree. Our victories have shaken his disciples. We've beaten their god twice over. Corypheus must be livid. Where is he now? After you dealt with the Duchess, Corypheus uprooted his major strongholds. He's moving south to the Arbor Wilds. His army clearly wasn't prepared to flee. Our victories have them on the defensive. We strike Corypheus now, while his people are reeling. If he's hiding in the Arbor Wilds, that's where we finish him. But what is Corypheus doing in such a remote area? 
His people have been ransacking elven ruins since Haven. We believe he seeks more. What he hopes to find, however, continues to elude us. Which should surprise no one. Fortunately, I can assist. You have my attention, Lady Morrigan. What Corypheus seeks in those forgotten woods is as ancient as it is dangerous. Which is? His best, if I show you. This is an Illuvian, an elven artifact from a time long before their empire was lost to human greed. I restored this one at great cost, but another lies within the Arbor Wilds. That is what Corypheus seeks. It's beautiful in its way. I found legends of an elven temple within the Arbor Wilds, untouched. It proved too dangerous to approach, and thus I turned elsewhere to find my prize. If Corypheus has turned southward, he could succeed where I failed. The Illuvian would be his. What does it do? A more appropriate question would be, where? Does it lead? This is a scene where the dialogue will be different depending on the backstory you created for your world state regarding Morrigan, the events of Dragon Age Origins, and her relationship with the hero of Ferelden. If this place once had a name, it has long been lost. I call it the Crossroads, a place where all Illuvians joy, wherever they might be. This place is extraordinary. How could this even exist? Who can say? Formed from the fabric of time and space, perhaps. The ancient elves left no roads, only ruins hidden in far-flung corners. This is how they traveled between them. As you can see, most of the mirrors are dark, broken, corrupted, or unusable. As for the rest, a few can be opened from this side, but only a few. How did you find out about this place? My travels have led me to many strange destinations, Inquisitor. Once, they led me here. It offered sanctuary. Sanctuary? Not all the mirrors lead back to our world. The ancients were nothing if not resourceful. If they don't lead back to our world, then... Places between, like this one. I can describe it no better. For a time, I had a safe place to raise my son. But only for a time. One cannot remain in between forever. What do you mean, a few can be opened from this side? Some of the Illuvians have been left unlocked, like doors accidentally left ajar. All others are closed. They can be opened only from beyond. Opened how? With a key. I suppose you have such a key? The key can be many things. Each Illuvian is different. I have knowledge as well as power. Often that is enough. Corypheus wants to come here? This is not the Fade, but it is very close. Someone with enough power could tear down the ancient barriers. And enter the Fade in the flesh. 
like Corypheus wanted to do with the Anchor. He learned of the Alluvian in the Arbor Wilds as I did. He marshals the last of his forces to reach it. You have made Corypheus desperate, Inquisitor. We must work together to stop him, and soon. There's the support Cassandra mission. At your service. This conversation will begin Varric's final I companion quest and also give us a little insight into where Bianca got her name. What's his name? Are you worrying for me or for yourself? A little of column A, a little of column B. I am the expendable one, after all. Oh, <laughs> don't worry, I'll protect you. We'll just have to... Well, this is a surprise. You're the Inquisitor, right? Bianca Davry, at your service. Your name is Bianca? It's a common name. Half the girls in the Merchants Guild are named Bianca. The other half are named Helga. I lucked out. I take it you're a friend of Varix. Who isn't a friend of Varix? You have met him before, right? Any friend of Varix is welcome here. Be careful saying things like that. Some of his friends you don't want to meet. But not much scares off the carta, does it? You probably don't bat an eye. Bianca's got a lead on where Corypheus got his red lyrium. The site of Bartran's folly, the tag Varric found, has been leaked. There's a deep roads entrance crawling with strange humans carting out red lyrium by the handful. How do we know they're not using multiple entrances to get to the Taig? Navigating the deep roads isn't like the surface. There's no accurate maps of the whole system, and there are cave ins, dark spawn, lava floods. If you find a route that gets where you're going, you don't deviate. Trying to find another way could be deadly. Who could have given away the Tig's location? There were a few people who knew. Hirelings from the expedition, a couple of close friends. How they found out isn't important. What matters is we know where they are now. You can get there from Orlais? It's a long way to the Free Marches. The deep roads are all connected. Or they used to be. Collapses and such. Some of them on purpose. They really are roads. They spanned the Dwarven Empire, went to every corner of the continent, maybe further. In theory, you can get to any Taig using the Deep Roads, but in practice, well, there's a reason nobody uses them anymore. We need to deal with this. As long as he has this source, Corypheus is that much more powerful. I couldn't agree more. I'll keep an eye on their operation. If you're interested in shutting it down, you've got my help. Try not to leave me waiting too long, Varric. I've got my own work to do, you know. Right. That's not going to be trouble at all. Let me know when you want to head to the entrance. There are spirits hovering by the veil to observe the thrones of powerful nations. Machinations, betrayals. After our time in Halam Shirao, I understand why. I had forgotten how I missed court intrigue. I'm pleased you had a good time. Political gambits? Broken promises? Half-truths? It is a palace full of motivation. 
and motivation is where great things happen. In any event, Selene should now be a steadfast ally, especially after helping her neutralize Briala. I hope you know that I didn't turn over Briala lightly. If I'd had another option... What? Why would I disapprove of... Oh, because we're both elves. I'm sorry, I was confused. I do not consider myself to have much in common with the elves. Nor should you. You're not defined by the shape of your ears. They're not your people. No, they are not. I joined the Inquisition to save the world. Regardless of who my people are, this was the best way to help them. As for the Elves of Orlais, I believe Briala is doing quite well on their behalf. She is an admirable woman. She's done good work. Hopefully with our help, she can help them even more. Yes. However much I identify, or fail to identify, with her people, Briala's efforts have been remarkable. She organized resistance against a powerful enemy, using only her wits and the resources at hand. That demands respect, especially in a world where most would look at her and only see a pair of pointed ears. This conversation will give us Vivian's final quest. Inquisitor, I wonder if you might help me with a delicate situation. There is an alchemical formula that I must complete, but I have been unable to obtain a critical ingredient. The heart of a snowy wyvern. I had arranged to obtain one, but the chevaliers working with me were killed in the Civil War. If I'm going to hunt down a snowy wyvern, I need you to tell me everything you know about it. They're quite rare and exceedingly dangerous. Their venom is the most potent of any wyvern. Ordinary hunters would not make the attempt. The risk is too great. You, my dear, would certainly be an equal to this monster. I didn't know you were an alchemist, Vivienne. What exactly is this project you're working on? It is a special request from a member of the Council of Heralds. I am still the Imperial Court Enchanter, after all. The matter is private. That is all there is to say. I'm not a hunter. Why do you think I can help? This beast is not hunted for sport, as other women sometimes are. It is far more deadly. In the past, chevaliers have been dispatched to either kill the creatures or drive them away from villages. Since my chevaliers have fallen to political conflict, I find myself in need of someone with a martial aptitude. I'll do what I can. Thank you, my dear. I would be most grateful. I shall give the location of its lair to Cullen. Remember, my dear, I must have its heart or the potion will not work. I eagerly await your success. You know I've got no problem with Orlesians, but Halam Sharal was a mess. At least under the queue, you don't get everyone tripping on each other's dicks while the country goes to crap. I hate politics. You've got a crappy job then, boss. Pleasure as always, boss. See you later, Ball. One for the Empress. For Gaspar. Briana. The Duchess. And Carissa. Right in the dangle bag. Well, remind me to stay on your good side. Don't worry. You're sparkling compared to that lot. A cook here, a footman there. What's it matter, right, so long as there's a book for the throne? A pretty one, sure. But how many lives are worth one Empress's arse? Ugh, that place. Should have just thrown in some bees and slammed the doors. I don't know. Want to stop a party, I think you go earwigs. <laughs> I hate those things, with their little pinchy butts. Josephine should add that to her paper threats. <laughs> you know the real lesson from all this? 
Never sleep with an empress. That, and Briala being an idiot, the whole thing would have gone different if that little piss-up wasn't in the middle. That was a mistake on their part. It made everything worse. Wrong way around, Inquisitor. It started worse. Lots of people died before there was a hole in the sky. That's who you're saving. If you get a chance, maybe remind them not to be idiots. Hey you, you have time? It's not a question, let's go. I've got something I want to do for you. Just come, you won't need your gear and stuff. Sarah, explain. Ah, oh, just come on, will you? I haven't wanted to do this with anyone for a long time. We're eating on a roof. They're horrible, right? And raisins, ugh. I freaking still hate cookies. You know, this is about as far from what I expected as we could get. I got caught stealing when I was little, yeah? You get alienage or worse for that, but the Lady Emold took me in. She was sick and couldn't have children. I had no parents. It worked out. Anyway, she gets a year sicker, so I ask her about cookies. Because mums make cookies. I can pass that down or something. Turns out, she couldn't cook. She missed that talk with her mum. The one she made, she bought and pretended. Ah, oh, right. Well, no, she was a bitch. She hid buying them by keeping me away from the baker. She did that by lying that he didn't like me, didn't like elves. She let me hate so she could protect her pride. I hated him so much and I hated... Well, she died, and I hate pride. Pride cookies. But this Inquisition thing is working out, so I figured I could make some Inquisition cookies, because then I could like them again. Oh, it's stupid. You know what? That would be great. See, I knew. Wait, really? Because it seemed friggin' daft every step to me. Suppose it's not really about them. I hate learning lessons. Makes my stomach hurt. Anyway, I'll throw this rubbish away. Next time we'll be better, yeah? Sarah. Anytime. Can we get off the roof now? Oh, yes, please. Smells like bird and dank. This part, not a good idea. Thanks, yeah. Feels good, this. I completely forgot that talking to Krem was an option. Shame You'll want to do this much earlier than I did, especially if you're using Iron Bowl in part of your team. Asking what the Chargers can do for the Inquisition will open up a couple War Table missions, one of which will result in an amulet of power for Iron Bowl. I never thought I'd work for Canary, but he grows on you. He's not like any commander I've ever worked for, that's for damn sure. How's Iron Bowl as a commander? If you know what you're doing and hold up your end, he's easy. He doesn't accept any lass. It keeps us alive, he leads from the front, and if you've an idea that'll win the fight, he listens. I've seen bands whose captains had to prove they were swinging the biggest sword. Well, isn't like that. The Chargers might give him more lip than you'd expect, but every one of us would lay down our lives for the big ass. How did a Tevinter soldier wind up in a Kunari spy's mercenary company? I wasn't a soldier at the time. I was in some trouble, trying to flee Tevinter. A Tribune and his men caught me in a border town tavern. They meant to make an example of me. Bull killed them. Gave up his eye doing it. Patched me up and asked if I was looking for work. I've been putting up with his jokes ever since. That's how he lost the eye? Yes. The guards had me on the tavern floor when Bull came inside and yelled for them to stop. One of them saw trouble coming and figured he'd finish me off. The guard had a flare. Bull put himself between me and the blow. They can't, idiot. Didn't even know me. Is it strange to work for a Canari? He hasn't tried to convert us to the Kune, if that's what you're asking. The Bull's charges don't care who you light a candle for, so long as your shield stays up. 
If he hadn't told me he was Ben Hasroth, I'd have thought he'd left that life behind. I didn't expect he'd tell you all that he was a spy. Not the whole band, but those who've been around long enough to trust. He figures most of us would find out sooner or later, and it should come from him. Eyes to eye, he says. It's never messed up a job. He just writes letters back home. Lots of the boys write letters back home. We'll talk later. Commander Cullen did good work at Adamant. Breached those walls like he'd done it a dozen times. Nice job with the demons, by the way. Iron Bull said the chargers were at my disposal. Do you have any suggestions on how to use them? I suspect Haven's quiet by now. Might be worth sending the boys back. We could recover some supplies, get an idea about the enemy's strength. We could even pick up any stragglers who haven't found Skyhold yet. Can we talk about the Bulls' chargers? Best company you'll find from here to the Anderfels. In my time with the Chief, we've gone up against everything from bandits to magic trees. We're expensive, but you'll never doubt we're worth it. Want to know anything in particular? Do the Chargers specialize in anything from a tactical standpoint? Bull doesn't want us large enough to work as an army. We're better as shock troops or skirmishers. We've got archers for hitting enemy infantry, Dalish with more archery, and Skinner and her people on the flanks. Rocky handles fortifications and traps, and Stitches keeps us all fighting. They mostly hold back. I'll lead the frontline fighters with Grimm, and the Chief goes wherever he can hit something. You said something about everything from bandits to magic trees. I'll admit to some curiosity. Right. Sylvans. That's what Dalish called them. Apparently spirits can possess trees, too. Some noble in the Dales, and they really don't like it when you call them Dalish nobles, had a haunted forest. His family had abandoned the land, but he wanted it back. The chief bought us all axes, and in we went. Between the axes and the torches, the Sylvans weren't too bad. Worst part was the squirrels. Are there rules for how mercenaries operate? If you don't want some noble to treat you like bandits, yes. There's also a code of conduct most companies hold to. Keeps things civilized on the battlefield. We accept surrenders for ransom from mercenaries, nobles, and soldiers wearing a lord's colors. Our prisoners are treated well, injuries tended. We'd want the same for any of ours who got captured. We'll talk later. How you doing? No. But you like demons! I enjoy the company of spirits, yes, which is part of why I do not abuse them with bindings. It isn't abuse if I ask. Not always true. Also, I do not practice blood magic, which renders this entire conversation academic. He won't bind me. He's a mage and he likes demons, but he won't help. Why would you want Solus to bind you? So I'm safe. If Solus won't do the ritual to bind me, someone else could. Will. Like the Warden Mages. And then... I'm not me anymore. Walls around what I want. Blocking, bleeding, making me a monster. A mage using blood magic could conceivably do that to any one of us, human or demon. You should ask Solus to bind you too, and then someone can bind him. We'll find a way to keep you safe without binding you, Cole. I have a suggestion, if Cole is ready to listen. I recall stories of amulets used by Ravani seers to protect spirits they summon from rival mages. A spirit? Wearing an amulet of the own. Okay, this amulet for Cole is separate from the Amulets of Power. This is purely a story-related amulet, and you can find this via a War Table mission that opens up at the end of this conversation. They will not take me. Want a drink? I've a hankering for company.
When I was a boy, there were these urchins who roamed the streets near my father's house. One day, they found a dog. A wretched little thing. It came to them for food. I caught it, tied a rope around its neck, and strung it up. Do you know what I did? You stopped them? Cut the dog down? I did nothing. Not a damn thing. It was crying. I saw the kicking legs, the neck straining and twisting. And I turned around, went inside, and closed the door. I could have told my father, or alerted someone. I didn't. I just pretended it wasn't happening. You said you were just a boy. I was old enough to know the dog was suffering and that it was wrong. I may as well have tied the noose myself. We... could... make the world better. It's just easier to shut our eyes. Nothing worth doing is easy. <laughs> Look at you. You would have done the right thing. Whatever you used to be, you aren't anymore. You're the Inquisitor. The Herald of Andraste. We're lucky there are people like you in the world. There's always some dog out there. Some fucking mongrel that doesn't know how to stay away. The spy master has confirmed it. Blackwall is gone. Go on. Liliana knows where he is, doesn't she? She knows everything. She doesn't know everything, yet. Sister Liliana had us search the warden's quarters. Not much to find, except this. It was missing from last week's reports. I don't know what Blackwall's interest in this particular matter is, but it could be a good place to start. I took a few minutes there to clear out the current war table missions, including getting Cole's amulet. I didn't understand the grand ball. It would have been easier if they said what they wanted. That would have made everything much simpler. The colors were pretty, though. I found the amulet that Solus told us about. Would you like to try it on? Yes, but not here. I like it here. We need some place that can go away if it becomes sharp. What do I do with it? You found one of the amulets. Excellent. May I? It is simple enough. You put it on, I charge it with magic, and you should be protected. Are you ready, Cole? They can't make me a monster. Ah! What was that? Oh, for... What are you doing to the kid? Stopping blood mages from binding me like the demons at Adamant. But it didn't work. Something is interfering with the enchantment. Something like Cole not being a demon? Solus, 
Is it possible that the amulet doesn't work on Cole because he's too... human? Regardless of Cole's special circumstances, he remains a spirit. Yes, a spirit who is strangely like a person. I don't matter. Just lock away the parts of me that someone else could knot together to make me follow. Focus on the amulet. Tell me what you feel. Warm, soft blanket covering, but it catches tears. I'm the wrong shape. There's uh, something. There. That way. We'll find whatever is preventing the amulet from working, and we'll make it right. All right, kid. Get Cullen and work with him on the map to figure out where you're sensing something wrong. Will you come with me? All of you? Sure. All right, I get it. You like spirits. But he came into this world to be a person. Let him be one. All I care about is making certain that the Venatori can't bind Cole. Fair enough. But that ritual of theirs only works on demons, right? This is not some fanciful story, child of the stone. We cannot change our nature by wishing. You don't think? However we deal with the problem, our next step is to track down whatever is interfering with the enchantment. Now, depending on which way we go with this quest, Cole will either end up more human or more spirit. This will impact his epilogue and his dialogue in Trespasser. It will also have a minor impact on the way he appears while stealthed. If you've noticed, he looks yeah, a little bit different than, than the other characters do currently, and this, this will affect how he appears when stealthed going forward. Likewise, because of their opposing stances on the issue, your choice here will have a corresponding approval or disapproval from uh, Solus and Bear. You killed me! What? I don't... I don't even know you! You forgot! You locked me in the dungeon in the Spire and you forgot and I died in the dark! The, the Spire? Cole, stop! Just take it easy, kid. He killed me! He killed me! That's why it doesn't work! He killed me, and I have to kill him back! If he killed you, wouldn't you be dead? Cole, this man cannot have killed you. You are a spirit. You have not even possessed a body. A broken body, bloody, banged on the stone cell, guts gripping in the dark, dank. A captured apostate. They threw him into the dungeon in the spire at Valroyo. They forgot about him. He starved to death. I came through to help. And I couldn't. So I became him. Cold. Cole was an apostate. That'd make the guy we just saw a Templar. Must have been buying lyrium. Let me kill him. I need to... I need to. Solus? We cannot let Cole kill the man. I don't think anyone was going to suggest that, Chuckles. Cole is a spirit. The death of the real Cole wounded him, perverted him from his purpose. To regain that part of himself, he must forgive. Come on. You don't just forgive someone killing you. You don't. A spirit can. Beric? The kid's angry. He needs to work through it. A spirit does not work through emotions. It embodies them. But he isn't a spirit, is he? He made himself human. And humans change. They, they get hurt. And they heal. He needs to work it out like a person. 
You would alter the essence of what he is. He did that to himself when he left the Fade. I'm just helping him survive it. Before I decide anything, I need a clearer picture of what happened. It seems the real Cole was an apostate. Captured and taken to the Circle by Templars. Who aren't known for their gentle nature. As the young man starved to death in a dungeon, his pain caught the attention of a spirit. Likely one of compassion. Compassion? An uncommon spirit, certainly. And all too fragile when its efforts to help prove to be in vain. Cole will never grow into a real person until he comes to terms with what happened. Leave it to me. All right, kid. You want revenge? Come with me. I'm sorry! I'm so sorry! Sorry isn't going to help him now, is it, kid? No. Then pull the trigger and put him down like a mad dog. Do it! No! How you doing, kid? Feel any better? No. You can't make it all just go away. I learned that the hard way. Forget. No. He needs to remember. You too. We're done here. For all we know, the amulet will now never function. Cole remains vulnerable to binding. No, he isn't. The amulet didn't work because he's too human, right? Maybe now the kid's also too human for that binding magic to work on him. I hope you're right. It still hurts. When do I stop hurting? Being with your friends can make you feel better. Come on, kid. Let's go for a walk. It'll clear your head. The left hand misses a friend with two different names. She's hurting, sad, alone. But everyone can see me now. They remember. How do I put honey in Leliana's wine without her noticing? I can help with that. It is good that he is not entirely changed, however human he becomes. The snowy wyvern that Vivian is looking for is in the same area of the Exalted Plains as the dragon we fought. You'll also notice there that um, Blackwall can't currently be selected. If we don't do his companion quest, and even if we do, depending on the choices we make, he may not be returning to the Inquisition and will remain unplayable for the rest of the campaign. Dispatch for you.
Despite the fact that Vivian is here, you still have to give her the heart in Skyhold. At that time, you'll have the choice to give her the actual heart or give her a fake. This will have ramifications on how she regards the Inquisitor for the remainder of the story and through trespass. Before we head back, we'll go to Valroya and see what's going on with Blackwall. Cyril Mornay, for your crimes against the Empire of Orlais. For the murders of General Vincent Callier, Lady Lorette Callier, their four children, and their retainers, you are sentenced to be hanged from the neck until dead. Do you have anything to say in your defense? Very well. Who's this man to Blackwall? A brother? A friend? Look at all these people. I thought we were more civilized than this. They're going to kill him. Good grasp of the obvious, this one. Proceed. Stop! A Grey Warden. This man is innocent of the crimes laid before him. Orders were given, and he followed them like any good soldier. He should not die for that mistake. Then find me the man who gave the order. Blackwall! No, I am not Blackwall. I never was Blackwall. Warden Blackwall is dead, and has been for years. I assumed his name to hide like a coward from who I really am. You, after all this time. It's over. I'm done hiding. I gave the order. The crime is mine. I am Tom Rainier. I didn't take Blackwall's life. I traded his death. He wanted me for the Wardens, but there was an ambush. Darkspawn. He was killed. I took his name to stop the world from losing a good man. But a good man, the man he was, wouldn't have let another die in his place.
You think your death will make up for what you did? Isn't it a start? Why are you here? That depends on what you say. Don't you understand? I gave the order to kill Lord Callier, his entourage, and I lied to my men about what they were doing. When it came to light, I ran. Those men, my men, paid for my treason while I was pretending to be a better man. This is what I am. A murderer, a traitor, a monster. monster have given himself up. Somewhere along the line, you stopped pretending. Liliana's report on Tom Rainier. Give me the overview. Looks like our friend was once a respected captain in the Imperial Orlesian army. Before the Civil War, he was turned, persuaded to assassinate one of Selene's biggest supporters. He led a group of fiercely loyal men on this mission, and told them nothing of it. His men took the fall for him. A few lucky ones, like Mornay, managed to escape. Let me guess. Our spymaster had this lying around somewhere, didn't she? It would have been difficult for anyone to connect Blackwall to Rainier. Even Liliana has something of a blind spot when it comes to wardens. <sighs> what do we do now? Black Wolf. Rainier has accepted his fate, but you don't have to. We have resources. If he's released to us, you may pass judgment on him yourself. Now, getting Blackwall out is optional, and just telling Cullen to do it isn't enough. You'll still have to go to the war table and then pick one of the advisor's plans, which will impact the manner in which he is freed and then affect the dialogue a little bit depending on what that was. Have uh, Rainier released to us? We must move quickly. We can explore our options back at Skyhold. Once freed, he has to be judged by the Inquisitor in Skyhold. And like Vivian, um, depending on what you do here, this is going to affect Blackwall's story through Trespasser. I can't make heads or tails of this. What can I do for you, my dear? Is it too much to hope that you've brought me the heart of the Snowy Wyvern? If you want the Wyvern's heart, you'll tell me what you're using it for. I can do better, darling. Give me the heart, and I'll show you what it's for. Will that suffice? All right. One heart, as requested. How kind of you. Please accept this as your payment. I must begin work immediately. I should apologize. I must admit that I had completely misjudged you, Inquisitor. I would like you to come with me to see this through. This should only take a moment, Inquisitor. I'm here, my darling.
My darling, Bastien? Vivienne, I'm sorry. There's nothing here now. It was interesting to For judgment this day, Inquisitor, I must present Captain Tom Rainier, formerly known to us as Warden Blackwall. His crimes... Well, you are aware of his crimes. It was no small expense to bring him here, but the decision of what to do with him is now yours. I didn't think this would be easy, but it's harder than I thought. Another thing to regret. I know you put another man in my place. Haven't enough died for me. I really think you've lost the right to judge anyone. There's enough evil in the world because of me. I accepted my punishment. I was ready for all this to end. Why would you stop it? What becomes of me now? If I remember correctly, all three of these options will have Blackwall remain with the Inquisition through the main story, but will affect whether or not he appears during Trespasser and what his backstory will be at that time. You have your freedom. It cannot be as simple as that. It isn't. You're free to atone as the man you are, not the traitor you thought you were or the warden you pretended to be. The man I am. I barely know him. But he... I... have a lot to make up for. If my future is mine, then I pledge it to the Inquisition. My sword is yours. If I'd said anything less, would an arrow from the rookery have snuffed me like a candle? Take your post, Tom Rainier. I do not believe a reminder is necessary for this accused. Her capture and disgrace could not have been more public. Grand Duchess Florian de Chalon, although her titles are among the dignities already at risk of forfeiture. You spared her life despite her treachery. What becomes of it now falls to you. Out of your element, Florian. Welcome to the Inquisition. My party. 
Despite her posture, Lady Florian has acknowledged your authority. Should I curse you on behalf of the Elder One? I realize he had no intention of honoring the Concordats I manipulated. Do as you must. I respect your mastery of the game, even as I despise your victory. Celine does not know her fortune. She remains a creature of formality and opportunity. We have use for both. Grand Duchess, Josephine will see that your wiles profit the Inquisition. Don't disappoint. Oh, one must remember that the game is never truly over, your worship. Now we'll do Varric's quest. This overlaps with a really early Hinterlands quest to get bandits out of uh, the Dwarven ruins of Valimar. Um, it's a quest we didn't bother doing before because we didn't really need to, but we might as well knock it out now since we're going to be there for the other one. smuggling would be profitable around here. Finally. I started to think you weren't coming. Nobody said you had to hang out in the creepy cave while you waited. Well, I did wait, so let's make this quick. These idiots are carrying the Red Lyrium out in unprotected containers. We don't want to stick around long enough for to start talking to us. Why would the containers need to be protected? Lyrium is incredibly dangerous in its raw form. It can poison or kill dwarves, and we're resistant to it. Sometimes it just explodes. No warning. Basically, only crazy people mine Lyrium. The mining cast doesn't just sling it into a bucket. It's carried in special containers that keep it under control. And that's normal Lyrium. The red stuff is worse. I wouldn't be surprised if most of their miners die just digging it up. You seem to know more about the effects of red Lyrium than most. Varric needed a save for his shard. I'm the one who built it for him. How did you find this operation in the first place? There must be hundreds of Deep Road's entrances. I've used this entrance in the past. Varric's not the only surface dwarf to explore the Deep Roads. Oh, I've got to admit, I was pretty surprised when I came here and found it full of humans. We better get to work. Sounds good to me.
Must be an old dwarven outpost. What was it for? Trade, maybe? Your guess is as good as mine. Downside to running a rogue tank and no warrior is not being able to break through these damaged wall sections. Not that it really matters. At this point in the game, there isn't really anything in this zone that we're going to need. So this is what you do now? Beg pardon? Skulking around in caves, shooting guys. Is this your day-to-day? -day? We usually try to avoid the caves. sent me about the Red Lyrium was the first I'd heard from you since the Chantry explosion. Had it been that long? Seriously, if you died in that mess, I'd have come back to Kirkwall and dug your ass. What would you do if I'd been cremated? Kick your ashes, of course. Apparently we can't open this door while we still have aggro, so let's run around and clean that up.
I built these doors. They probably shut this one from the other side when they heard the ruckus we were making. Ta-da! This is your work. Are you an artificer? I've been known to build the occasional trap, weapon, or otherwise lethal device now and then. I take it you're a builder too? You've got the telltale, how do I take that apart and put it back together look in your eye. That might have been word for word what I was thinking, yes. If you're going to replicate these, start with a lock and build outward. Trust me, it'll save a lot of time. After you. fun. Kind of like old times. I don't recall us ever shooting people together. Remember crashing Bartram's guild dinner? We might as well have shot him. This isn't nearly as dangerous as pissing off my brother. Shit is going on at least. Maybe longer. Why? You'll have to stop by before Bogdan gets back. You should see my new workshop. I'll see what I can do. You know your family will kill me if I stop by, right? They're not gonna kill you. You always say that, and they always send assassins. this entrance again. Bianca. That's exactly like your key. How did they get a copy? Well, funny story. When I got the location, I went and had a look for myself. And I found the red lyrium, and I studied it. You know what it does to people. I was doing you a favor. You've had people studying it for years now, and they've come up with nothing. I just... Wanted to figure it out. Did you figure it out? Actually, yes. I found out that Red Lyrium... It has the Blight, Varric. Do you know what that means? What? The two deadly things combined to form something super awful? Lyrium is alive. Or something like it. Blight doesn't infect minerals. Only animals. I couldn't get any further on my own, so I looked for a Grey Warden mage. Blight and magical expertise in one, right? And I found this woman, Jonica. She seemed really eager to help with my research. So I gave her a key. Janica? The Warden who was trying to control Corypheus? Maker's breath. I knew something seemed off. I didn't realize until you said you found Red Lyrium at Haven. I came here and, well, then I went to you. That name means something to you, Varric? She was at the Grey Warden prison where we found Corypheus. 
She was more than a little obsessed with him. You had to know we'd figure out what happened, Bianca. Why did you insist on coming with us? Varric told me what people were doing with the Red Lyrium. I had to help make this right. You told Varric you had a lead, so we'd straighten out your mistake. I know I screwed up, but we did fix it. It's as right as I can make it. This isn't one of your machines. You can't just replace a part and make everything right. No, but I can try, can't I? Or am I supposed to wallow in my mistakes forever, kicking myself, telling stories of what I should have done? Ha! As if I would tell stories about my own mistakes. Oh, for pity's sake. Would you two just get a room? Sorry, Inquisitor. We've done all we can here. Bianca, you'd better get home before someone misses you. Varric. Don't worry about it. Get him killed, and I'll feed you your own eyeballs, Inquisitor. Okay, that's it for this area. We finish Varric's questline by talking to him once we get back to Skyhold. But before we head back, we're going to finish that other quest. These doors require cranks to open, and this door in particular needs two. So once we have the other one, we'll put them both in place, and then we'll need to use the Tacticam to have uh, one of our companions operate one while we operate the other, so that we can do them both at the same time. must have been abandoned centuries ago, and yet it remains relatively intact. Dwarven architecture certainly is sturdy.
I'm glad to have answers, but... Shit. The second she showed up here, I knew. I just... I let this mess happen. I gave her the tag. I am not good at dealing with shit like this. I don't think anyone is equipped any better than you are. No, no, the point is... I don't. I don't deal with things. If Cassandra hadn't dragged me here, I'd be in Kirkwall right now, pretending none of this was happening. You know that's not true. You've worked as hard as any of us to stop Corypheus. Is that true? I don't even know anymore. Thank you. For your help back there. After all this, do you think you'll see Bianca again? I always do. Alright, we have now taken care of everything Inner Circle related prior to the endgame. There are only two videos left before we begin the Trespasser DLC. In the next video, we'll thwart Corypheus in the Arbor Wilds and meet some ancient elves, and after that, we'll have a final battle against Corypheus and reach the end of the main campaign. See you then.